Before I begin to talk about what I was supposed to talk about today, I'm not going to be in amazement how I was actually able to remember what exactly I was supposed to talk about this morning. Confusing, isn't it? Good morning and happy Tuesday, everyone. Yes, so yesterday at the end of the video, I talked a little bit about how I binge watched my very first show ever or my very first binge watching show ever, I guess. And I say binge watch, I mean, I did watch it throughout the entirety of last weekend, but I mean, it's not like it was very difficult. It was only eight episodes and didn't take very long. And the show itself was a show called Solar Opposites. Now, this is definitely a show that's not made for kids. So, oh, I guess you can talk about the show without really getting into why it's not really for kids as long as I explain it. Basically, one of the co-creators of Solar Opposites is named Justin Roiland, who is also one of the co-creators of Rick and Morty, which is a show that I really have grown to like over the years. And yes, I have been watching, you know, all of season four so far. In fact, I just saw... Sunday night's episode yesterday. It was pretty sweet. But, uh, no, we're not talking about Rick and Morty, we're talking about Solar Opposites. Now, one thing you really need to know about this show, and Rick and Morty does this a lot as well, there's definitely several times they do break the fourth wall, which, you know, that sort of goes into Justin Roiland's brand of humor, which is funny. You know, another thing about Solar Opposites that's different and actually may make it better than Rick and Morty is the fact that it's on Hulu, a streaming service, you know, therefore not on syndicated television, meaning that they can actually get away with a lot more non-kid-friendly related things. And I'm not just talking about you know, dropping a few four-letter words here and there. I mean, this show really does get down and dirty sometimes. And sometimes it really is funny. Sometimes, you know, I mean, let's be honest, not every show ever had some, you know, bullseyes in terms of comedy style and jokes. I mean, to be perfectly honest, it took me until three episodes in to find myself really laughing out loud at what I was watching when it came to us Solar Opposites. So, well, I actually wasn't even laughing out loud. It was just a sort of, I mean, what's like a step below laugh out loud? Like, basically, you could see me, I mean, if you can see, if you saw me do so, you could clearly tell I was laughing. How, how's that? Again, I don't really know the uh, term for it. So all that's taken care of. I'm watching, uh, you know, Solar Opposites. Um, again, this really isn't the sort of show that I can really go into detail about because it's not really made for kids. I mean, don't get me wrong, not every animated show I watch has to be, you know, geared towards children. I mean, to be perfectly honest, not every animated show I should watch should be geared towards adults as well. Honestly, you need to, th you need to find that happy medium. That's why, in a lot of ways, shows like Spongebob, Rugrats, um, Samurai Jack, uh, see, those are the sorts of shows that both children and adults can really like and get into. Though the final season of Samurai Jack, you may want to make sure that, you know, parents are present for that. But, yeah. For the most part. Oh, Gravity Falls. That's, that's a really, that's another really good thing. Like Gravity Falls is a really good show for kids and adults. So, without question, Solar Opposites like Rick and Morty is most definitely catered toward the adult scene. Now, Let's be honest, we live in the days of streaming, the internet, social media, all that stuff. So, it's very likely that there are some children who have watched Solar Opposites. 
and, you know, maybe they picked up a few things. Maybe they, maybe just sort of flew by them. For me, I would have been able to pick up on a few things. It's just, I would know better than to not, like, say that dialogue out loud. Unless it sounded, like, really sort of clever and, you know, funny. That's how, that's actually kind of like my brand of humor. Like, listen, I grew up watching a lot, and I do mean a lot, of animated television. Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, back when Fox Kids was on. You know, Kids WB, all that stuff. And I, there was a point where I was just quoting, like, everything I saw. But then again, what shot of actually does have a filter nowadays? So eventually I learned, you know, okay, I'm only going to make, you know, quotes from any of those shows if, like, the situation calls for it. Maybe it's for a snarky comeback if someone insults me, or, you know, maybe it's sort of meant to ease tension in a moment. You know, something like that. It's about reading the situation is, is what it is. Um... Yeah, all I can say is Solar Opposites is a pretty, pretty great show. I mean, it's only eight episodes. You could bang that out in the span of a weekend, probably in the span of a day. Um, you could, uh, I mean, the voice cast is pretty solid. Uh, Justin Roiland and who I believe is Thomas, Tom, Thomas Middleditch are like, uh, the two main characters, they definitely have great chemistry. And, you know, Thomas Milditch has proven to be very funny. I mean, he was on uh, Silicon Valley, I believe, and he's his most definite. Um, he's been on Rick and Morty before. So, needless to say, he's familiar with that brand of humor and, you know, how it works. And, like, why it works, why it's funny, all that stuff. Um... What else did I talk about? Again, it's really hard to talk about a show like this. Because, for I mean, long story short, it's good. Highly recommend it if you actually are in that age range for it. And, you know, if you're a kid, you know, I would ask my parents for permission. But let's be honest, the fact that I'm explaining the show the way it is means that you're not gonna wanna, uh, you're not gonna wanna ask your parents for permission anyway, but you should still do it because it's practice for making good choices in life. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. So, needless to say, you're gonna be thoroughly entertained. And, again, another thing that makes it a little bit better than Rick and Morty is, you know, they are a little more loose with what they're doing. I mean, Sometimes you just watch the show and you're like, okay, how are they, how are people, how are shows like this able to get away with, like, what they're doing? And it was actually something that Matt Groening of, you know, the creator of both The Simpsons and Futurama had figured out. And he figured it out with, believe it or not, my favorite character on Futurama, Bender. Oh, sorry, um. His full name is Bender Bending Rodriguez. I can roll my uh, Rodriguez. There we go. You gotta make sure you gotta roll the R's when you do that. That's, that's, yeah, that's what you gotta do. It sounds sexy that way. Um, so Matt Greening had figured out that at least on TV and syndicated television, censors will let you get away with anything. As long as what's being done on screen isn't being done by a human or a person. Bender is a robot. So, yes, he can smoke. He can steal. He can hurt people. He can do all that stuff. Because he's a robot, not a person. See, if a person does that, that's bad. But a robot? By all accounts, it's, an, by all accounts, it's really just an inanimate object with an on-off switch. Even though Bender doesn't really have... Oh, that really, I mean, that's actually another thing Futurama really does, and that actually shows like Rick and Morty and um, uh, Solar Opposites does as well. And that's, um, 
Like, when they establish something, they don't really go into great detail as to how it works. They just go out and do it. And, you know, following cartoon logic, they just sort of let the chips fall where they may. And it works. It adds to the entertainment value. So needless to say, um, you know, I recommend Soul Opposites. In fact, I may very well binge watch it again as I await um, Wednesday and Thursday evenings for both The Masked Singer and Celebrity Watch Party, which I will be talking about. I mean, man, the quarterfinals, for, the, the semifinals for uh, The Masked Singer tomorrow night. Holy cow. And we're going to get to the finale, you know, right before... Oh, on um, the week before Memorial Day weekend. Actually, hold on a second. I need to look up something. Okay. It really is going to... I kept thinking that um, May, like the final days of May were going to be Memorial Day, but no, it's going to be uh, Monday the 25th, which is good. So now I know exactly um, when it is. I knew it was going to be soon. So, yeah, right before Memorial Day, that's when the Mass Singer ends. And literally the day before Memorial Day, that's actually when um, my father is going to be able to get his uh, boat for uh, Kiko Lake. Oh, I didn't forget about Kiko Lake. And uh, don't worry. I actually have, uh, well, it's something that technically you've seen before, me, you've seen me do before. But, you know, it'll be my first time at Kiko Lake back, so I want to make it extra special. So, uh, look forward to that. It's basically a dedication to a group of people that had their plans, uh, you know, ixnayed because of, uh, everything going on. I guess I could talk a little bit about how I'm doing in terms of all this. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit hard not to be able to see entire people ever again. In fact, I'll be honest, there's uh, someone special that I've been thinking about. Someone who I actually would see before this whole thing began. And needless to say, when everything is all over and we're able to see each other again, the first thing I'm going to do is seek out that person and hopefully at the very least give them a hug. That'd be really nice. Um, outside, I mean, thing of it is, I live in New York, and things are going to start opening up, like, on the 15th, which means I would very much like for a certain place at Kiko Lake to be open by the time we get to Memorial Day. I'm hoping that's the case, keeping fingers crossed, but you never know. Because here's the thing, I love going to Kiko Lake, but unless you bring, like, a lot of stuff with you to do... Or, you know, for a fact, like, there are places you are you want to go to get to. You really are potentially going to be bored out of your gourd. I mean, what made Kiko Lake a lot more tolerable over the last couple of years is the fact that we finally, finally, finally decided, you know what, we got to get internet up here. So let's do that. Seriously, I think I was like, I might have been like, 25, 26, when we finally are like, you know, we really need internet up at Kiko Lake because not knowing what to do, not being able to socialize on social media and do all that stuff, it's a little, um, you know, cumbersome. Not quite as cumbersome as the fact that the sun is literally glaring in my eye again. Why do I sit here? Oh, right, because it's a very comfortable... Well, it's comfortable when I sit here, I guess. I, I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, who am I kidding? I like letting the sun shine in. I do. I like to leave my blinds open and just, you know, let the sun shine in. Positive vibes. It's awesome. I like it. I really, really do. Um, so, yeah, you now have a... Uh, some thoughts as to, by the way, that wasn't like getting emotional or anything. I literally, like literally, you know, that some, you know, like sometimes you blink and it feels like something's in your eye in an annoying way. So you got to like rub it a lot. 
That's literally what I just had. But it, it's, it's gone now, so we're good. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's, that's really all I got. So like, share, share, hit the subscribe button, follow me on the social platforms, on those occasions on YouTube. I am very humble I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I'm hoping you all have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk to channel, I'm always going to be here to lend you your back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.